Hey, Brad, one of the biggest changes we're all dealing with right now is wearing a mask and not all offer the same comfort and protection. I recommend the Boomer Natural three-layer comfortable and highly breathable mask. These come in sizes for adults, teens, and children and are in stock can be shipped to you quick. Yeah, Book, one of the reasons they're so highly protective is because of the nano silver technology that's literally woven right into the fabric. Nano silver can block those tiny drops and particles from getting into the nose and mouth, and that's what we want right now. It's the best protection out there. Boomer also offers the popular nano silver neck gaiters, that's a mask that'll cover your neck and face. Another great thing is that Boomer will donate one face cover for every order to nonprofits and charities, helping tens of thousands of Americans in need. And I got to say, I love that. Yeah, order now at BoomerNaturals.com. Use promo code Booker and save 20%. That code Booker at BoomerNaturals.com. Get free shipping and handling when you spend at least $50 online at BoomerNaturals.com. So the other match going down at All Out that I, that I think that we should spend a little time discussing, Chris Jericho. You know, the Ayatollah of rock and roller, um, he is taking on Orange Cassidy. Uh, and this is their third match, I think, that they've had with one another. They've been in a, uh, a feud for quite some time now. Even they had a debate a couple of weeks ago with Eric Bischoff moderating. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. Um, what, do you, what do you think about Jericho at this stage in his career? Let me, I guess let me ask you this. Should Jericho still be in the title picture? Or do you want to see Jericho do stuff like this where he's working with a, a bubbling talent, someone who's on the rise that the internet really is behind and helping get them to the next level? Kind of what we were talking about earlier in this show. Well, I think um, it's not going to hurt, you know, Cassidy working with someone like Chris Jericho. Um, there again, you, you, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what, what people think these days, but you should always want to, you know, how you think you cap on, you should always want to be, trying to learn, you know, man, how did this guy get to that level? You know, what did he do um, to get to the level that he, that he's at, you know, because he's living in a big house, you know, I think he's got an elevator in it. And so I want one of those too. So that's, that's me personally. <laughs> that's the way I'm thinking <laughs> when, when I'm working with one of these top guys and hopefully uh, these young cats uh, start thinking that way too. Um, there again, a guy like Orange Cassidy, I don't know a whole lot about it. Okay, first and foremost, uh, I, I can't, you know, um, document one Orange Cassidy match that I've seen. But I've seen him get in the ring and do some moves um, and do some stuff. Uh, I, I, I drive to the outside with his hands in his pockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him do that as yeah. well as Orange Cassidy. What I remember most about him is the jeans and the jacket. Yeah, you know, and the shades. Mm -hmm. that right there t tells me more than you know uh than most you know wrestlers tell me his his little gimmick right there it has something it says i don't know what it is you know what i mean he i, I don't know i don't know what it is but he seems to have have something and when you when guys like that come along man is you gotta you gotta use them you gotta know how to use them and for him to you know, come in the AEW, get a rub, um, get put in that position to work with a guy like Chris Jericho, hopefully he'll learn exactly what it means. Um, I, you know, I, remember I was listening uh, to to something JR said. He said, man, when I first saw Orange Cassidy, I looked at this guy. I said, man, who's this guy? I mean, he's a jabroni. He should be, why, why is he here? He shouldn't even be, you know, on the roster. That's what JR said on, on his uh, podcast or something. That's, I read it somewhere. And then uh, he said, after, you know, being around it for a minute, he goes, man, this guy's pretty good. You know, and the, th and the reason I say that um, is because I remember when I first came to WWE, man, it was so, it's, I mean, it's so striking I'm mean, to hear something like that. Uh, when I first came to WWE and uh, Earl Hepner, uh, referee Earl Hepner, we were on the road at one of the house shows. Uh, and uh, we had been working after, you know, and I had been there for a while um, at that point. And uh, Earl Hepner, he came up to me and he goes, hey, Buck, you know, man, I just want to tell you something, man. He said, man, I don't know what all the hype was about you when you first got here, man, because I didn't see it in you at all. He said, man, I didn't know what it was. He said, but you know what? Now I do. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you got to be around people to understand it, you know. And, and, and I say that because 
you know, when I, when I, I used to watch Matt Hardy and I used to say, man, what, the, what is this guy, man? Who is this guy, man? It looked like he got two left feet, man. And so I'm like, this guy's, he's not, he can't be that over, you know? And then I remember working with Matt Hardy on the house show one time and uh, the crowd was going so freaking crazy. And I go, wow, now I realize why this guy's so over, you know, you just never know it. Sometimes right. until you're up close and personal and see it, you know, um, with a, you know, without, you know, um, having blinders on or anything like that. You're forced to actually see what the guy is really all about. And then they go out and perform, and then you almost go, hmm, you know, okay, maybe I was wrong. And I've been wrong, uh, you know, many, many times, even in reality of wrestling, when I see a guy, you know, Gustavo Mendoza, case in point, uh, I say, man, this kid is he's nowhere, you know, near going to make it on the roster. I don't even know why he's at reality of wrestling, and he become, you know, the you know, the longest rating, you know, reality wrestling champion that we had, you know, so it's, you, you just never know until you up close and personal with, with someone. And, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, just like MJF, like Orrin Cassidy, they got something. Um, and it's, it's up to us to enhance it and bring it out and make you guys see it even more. I'm talking about in, you know, uh, in HD. So, I, I like it. I like the um, the pairing. He definitely there again. He's going to get a whole lot out of just you know being in the ring with someone like Chris Jericho. Yeah, and 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 uh, I, I liked everything that you said there, um, especially about the Earl, that. To me, if Earl came up to me and said that, I feel kind of hot about it. Be like, what do you mean? I was the WCW <laughs> World Champion. Well, you know, so I, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> oh, man. Me and Earl, man, we. we Best of friends, man. I mean, we 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 really uh really tight. Now, uh, is he as good a referee as all of us think that he is? So all the fans, to me, it's like when you talk about referees, you talk about Earl, Nick Patrick, Mike Kyoto. Those are the first three names that come to mind about like guy, oh Charles Robinson about guys who are just I don't great. About Charles. I don't I know think you don't think about Charles, but but what do you think about Earl? Was he as good as we wrestling fans make him out to be? Oh, man, you know, best of the business. A guy that knew exactly what to be at, you know, at the right time, all the time. So, um, nah, man. I mean, I, I, have, I have nothing but the highest uh, of respect for Earl Hep Hepner and, and Dave uh, as far as what those guys brought to the business, man. They definitely um, Hall of Famers as far as I'm concerned, um, as far as refer referees go, because uh, that job right there it takes a it takes a different type of person, you know, um, because especially I'm um, coming from that era. Uh, that he came from because the referee was so instrumental in a lot of those matches. Uh, you know, most famous one, you know, for me was, you know, you know, <laughs> where did you get the plastic surgery, brother? You know, <laughs> How much did it cost, brother? How much did it cost you, brother? You know, <laughs> that, that stuff was real to me, man. It was great too. It was, it was so real, man. When I just thinking about that segment, hey, right? Looking at them both, you know. <laughs> How much for the plastic surgery, man? <laughs> and they, they look just alike too, bro. I'm gonna tell you, man. If that ain't great television, <laughs> I remember that like it was yesterday, man. Hulk was so, you know. You know, taking it back and so beat down after getting his back turned on, you know, like that. You know, how much, you know, how much for the plastic surgery, <laughs> brother? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Main event, him, uh, Hogan and Andre for the title. Yeah, we're just a, one of those classic times where the, like, when you think about it, it's a really cheesy idea. Like, hey, these guys are oh, twins. Man, but it works. Work. Well, man, but it works, man. You know, it's, it's crazy, man. It's like, a, <laughs> Diego De La Cruz coming out with the, the accordion. <laughs> accordion. It works, man. It's anytime, so stupid, but it works. Anytime you get something that, that works, man, you, you run with it, man. 